Chinese AI startup DeepSeek sent shockwaves through the market this week, sparking concerns over the U.S.'s lead in the AI arms race. Joining us to discuss the AI startup and a cyber attack it experienced earlier this week is Eric Cole, CEO, Secure Anchor. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Friday to you. It feels like the dust has settled a little bit uh, when it comes to the threat that DeepSeek poses. You know, the U.S. has been and has wanted to be the leader in this AI arms race. Is this threat real now when it comes to deep seek? It absolutely is. And the reason is you're seeing a little downturn, but I think the dust is settling. But we have to remember is AI in the U.S. has always been built on excessive hardware. The typical AI models for U.S.-based companies was $100 million, which really drove up the price of NVIDIA, Intel, and the hardware stocks. And what DeepSeek really did is showing you can get the same accuracy for $5 million, which is significantly less. So this is going to have a huge long-term impact on what it does for tech stock and what it does for hardware-dependent models. There are questions, though, in terms of that that cost. Like, one, is the number accurate, the 5.6 million? Number two, how did they get those chips? Was it avoiding, you know, was it kind of circumventing some of those export controls? Did they get them through Singapore? I know the government is looking into this. So there are questions about this. Uh, and if there is, you know, kind of truth to that. And then besides that, the relationship with Deep Seek and the Chinese government because there are those questions hanging over this, you know, uh, and, you know, the measure of calm and equilibrium we're starting to see as we finish out this week, uh, what should we what what should we be prepared for in terms of deep seek? Does it, you know, kind of wake up? I don't want to say the AI uh, space was uh, asleep at all. I think, you know, you've been racing to spend, 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 but does it mean we'll see a pullback in spending or does it mean we'll continue to see more development from the U.S. So first thing we have to keep an eye on is what was the actual cyber attack? Because that's really what put Deep Seek in the news. It wasn't yeah. that they were the disruptor. It was really that they suffered a major attack and their entire registration system was down for 24 hours. So the real question is, was this just a denial of service attack that was trying to put them down or did somebody steal their AI models? Because if it's just Deep Seek, that's competing with US companies, I believe they can adapt and adjust and be able to withstand this. But if the AI models were stolen from DeepSeek, and now over the next six months, you're gonna see 10 or 15 DeepSeeks that are all competing with US companies, that could be a major game changer. So we really have to sit back and wait whether DeepSeek is an anomaly or whether there's gonna be a lot more and how quickly US companies are gonna to adapt to these new data training models. How important is it to balance functionality with uh, protection and cyber protection? Because you make a great point that, you know, the reason why we heard about this was because of that, you know, the cyber attack. So, you know, startups obviously are, you know, trying to balance being first and, you know, reaching the market and, you know, may cut some corners on protocols. But how important is it to balance out protection? In the beginning, you can get away with less security and more functionality because the reality is people always buy on functionality. You're not going to go in and see an AI model crush it in the marketplace because they had amazing security. Security isn't what consumers want. It's all about the throughput, the output, and the accuracy. But the question now is, once you have the functionality, how quickly can you adapt the security? So I think now it's important that U.S. companies start really addressing the security model, because if you just look at your banking, it has two factor. It has data protection. It has location tracking. Yet I logged into my AI models this morning. No password required, no access, no tracking. So now the trick is, now that functionality is there, how quickly can we adapt security? Otherwise, we're going to see these attacks continue and totally devastate the market. So it's for us here in the U.S., it's really been about a week since we've really learned about uh, Deep Seek. Uh, what is the timeline for Deep Seek or a company like that to really uh, penetrate further in the market, uh, given what we know now? The next 90 days is really going to be critical for two reasons. First, how quickly 
will deep seek penetrate because right now deep seek is a hype everyone's like mm -hmm. this is cool it's one of the largest downloadable apps on the apple store and people are testing it out now one of two things is going to happen either they're going to test it and say yeah it's okay but we like our u.s based companies better and they're going to sort of disappear or people are going to adapt to it and you're going to start seeing chat gpt and other models really impacted so that's going to be the first thing of how quickly consumers really adapt it and the second is how quickly u.s companies will adapt if they just sit back and not do anything deep sea can dominate but if they start changing their models to lower hardware prices then all of a sudden they could level the playing field so the real 90 days in terms of consumer adoption and how quickly we change on our model is really going to lay the foundation for the next three years you make a great point because i just did a check to see if it was because on monday it was the number one downloaded app it still is at the top of the uh, app store today chat gpt is the second one threads is number three uh it, so you know so it still does have that momentum behind it uh this this week but what about uh any concern for you know data sets that may be biased i think that's one of the questions that's come up with regard to deep seek for instance someone had did a query with regard to tiananmen and you didn't get the same kind of answer there that you got with chat gpt right so uh, with deep seek this is basically the whole TikTok issue replaying itself the, the reason why we saw uh last week where TikTok was banned for a short period of time was because of the data influence that it would have on us in terms of the impact and AI has a bigger impact because we're going in and we're training AI on models that are similar to Eric. So in ChatGPT, I have an Eric Cole model where it could think and act like me. Now imagine if that data set is biased, imagine if the Chinese can now influence that Eric data set and feed me biased information. So you're absolutely right. It's the influence of the data set of the Chinese that we really have to look at very closely, not just the cheapness and cost and accuracy of the results. Wow, I, I am fascinated by what you just mentioned. It's like you have a digital twin. I used to be, you know, kind of skittish about that idea, but I recently had to attend uh, a meeting and I was like, I wish there was in this instance uh, where I could send in like my digital twin for that. All right, Eric Cole, a CEO, Secure Anchor, thank you so much for the insight when it comes to DeepSeek AI, what it all means for the U.S. and its positioning in the space.